So welcome folks to another video. I'm Brendan from Blue Light and today I'm here in Leeds um, about to run one of my uh, assessment centre seminars. So it's a quite a swanky environment here at the Radisson in the city centre. So one of the reasons why I'm making this video is because whether you're one of my paying clients or you're one of my fantastic members of the uh, online Facebook group that I've got, uh, the secret one where there's now almost 3,000 people helping and supporting each other through the recruitment process consistently whilst people are preparing for the assessment center they are missing out on the one thing that's going to help them ace the assessment center and that's structure 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 just about everything you do in your future role as a police officer is going to be formulaic um, there's no creativity around how you arrest someone. There's no creativity or innovation in how you require someone to provide a sample of breath for a roadside breath test. So in the same way, there's very little creativity at the assessment centre. Actually, there's more than very little. There's no room for creativity at all. Despite what the College of Policing and the Police Service need from recruits today at the assessment centre, they're just not testing for that innovative, creative approach um, that's going to be highly valued in the future by the police service. What they're testing you for is a, a rather bland set of competencies which are now well over a decade old and they are very formulaic. In that you can apply a structure to, for example, I'm going to show you now the role plays, you can apply the same structure to any role play they provide you with. Anything to do with the Westshire Centre, any kind of problem they present you with, this is the only way to deal with it. It will absolutely ensure you score really highly against the competencies. Remember, the assessment centre is testing for competence. It's not testing for values. They've got it the wrong way around. The police service should be testing you for values and then developing your competence once you're in. But hey, what do I know? I'm just one person. Um, actually, what do I know? Um, there's probably in excess of two and a half thousand people who have joined the police as a result of my coaching and support over the five years. So maybe I know something, maybe I know something. So here we go. Um, what's going to really help you at the assessment centre in the role plays? What's going to help you is cut set. And later on today we'll be exploring this in a lot more detail. So it'll almost be like for those delegates who are going to be arriving very soon. Here's one I prepared earlier. So what does CUDSA stand for? Well, CUDSA isn't something that Brendan invented. Uh, Brendan's pinched a lot of these ideas with pride from the police service over his three decade career. And um, CUDSA is actually a non-contact conflict management model that's used a lot in the public order world. Um, without the R, I've added the R, and I've kind of transformed the meaning of some of it as well to dovetail in with the role plays for the Police Assessment Centre. So the C stands for confront. This is where you can use exactly the same set of lines to deliver your first 30 seconds of the role play. And already you're going to be starting to tick boxes in the competence um, uh, assessment process. Um, so that can be done, you can just rattle that off. You can learn these lines now so you can deliver them without even having to think about it at the assessment centre. The understanding phase, really, really important that you deliver an outstanding set of questions. So you'd be looking to start off, and I'll give you a little free gift here, start off the, the opening part of the understanding phase with, please can you explain to me exactly what happened when, and then you describe the problem, whatever it may be. Even if someone's coming to you to say that I don't like a certain policy or I don't like a certain way you're doing things at the assessments at the uh, Westshire Centre, that will have been born out of some experience which has led them to believe that they don't like the policy or the whatever it is at the, assess at the uh, Westshire Centre. So the question would be, please can you explain to me exactly what happened for you to come to the conclusion that our policy on whatever it is isn't working? So whatever the scenario, that's your opening question. And it's the same opening question that detectives use when they interview victims, witnesses, and suspects. So once again, something borrowed, pinched with pride from the police service. We're then going to deliver our five WH questions, but in a very formulaic way. Uh, in the course today, we will look at how to actually structure those questions in a very simple to complex way, which is going to help you absolutely nail down the role player. Because the role player at this stage is going to want to try and take control of the conversation. 
with this cutsoff framework, you're not going to allow them to do so. We then move into the define and summarize stage. Really important here that you explain any new policies that are in the information pack in the five minutes preparation before you go into the assessment center, sorry, into the role plays. And then we come to our solution phase. So in the solution phase, I'm looking for something that's a little bit more than just enforcement. Because if you look at openness to change, it does say creative and innovative, and you are being assessed against openness to change. Look, creative and innovative is not coming up with something that's going to get you an MBE or some huge award. It's just something that's a little bit more than enforcement. So today we'll be exploring how you can deliver more than just enforcement here. You can deliver something that's actually going to prevent the problem from reoccurring and a little bit of advocacy. So what are you going to do to make sure that this individual is happy with the level of service that they've received? And that, once again, is all formulaic. Um, we'll be reviewing the ultimate guide I've put on my course to all the solutions you could possibly ever think of at the Westshire Centre. And if it's for a business owner, uh, one of the things I do also provide is a script uh, with six solutions covering enforcement, prevention and advocacy that would cover any issue to do that a business person has at the Westshire Centre. They sound very specific, but they're incredibly generic. Um, this last part, the assess and monitor and the result. Once again, we can use exactly the same lines to deliver this part of the CUTSA model uh, for any role play at all. This has just got something to do with you talking about how you're going to ensure that those people who you've tasked up report back to you on a daily basis. This will allow you to assess and monitor the problem as you resolve it. And in addition to that, you'd like to meet with the individual on a weekly basis so you can provide them with feedback and you can seek feedback from them as to how you are doing up to the point where you resolve the problem. Um, and at this point here, I'd like you to be desperately cheeky. So at this point, you should have absolutely smashed the five minutes you've got for the role play. Uh, the assessor and the role play will absolutely know that you've been coached and supported, probably by me, but it doesn't matter. They can only score you highly. So at this point now, I'd like you to be a little bit cheeky. Here's your challenge. It's called the business card challenge. What I'd like you to do is to offer them your business card. Here's my business card. Please take it. It has my contact details on it. Should you need to call me at any time, please do so. Please take my card now and give them that business card. Um, what I'm finding particularly interesting now is that quite a lot of my clients are saying that the role players have actually accepted the business card. And in one case, as he walked out of the room, the role player was just smiling at them, shaking their head, looking at absolutely nothing. They just accepted nothing from you. You'd role play them back. That's the idea. Get those role players role played. Um, they're mostly ex-cops. Uh, they get paid 90 pounds a day, 90 pounds a day to do this. They must be absolutely bored out of their gourds. So liven up their day a little bit. Another client recently, um, when they were going into a particularly innovative part of the prevent uh, phase, um, talking uh, about um, an independent advisory group, um, I'll more detail later on in the seminar about how to actually form that and how to deliver it. Um, but the role player who'd been very dull, boring, delivered his lines in very monotone, very monotone way at this stage, uh, looked at the, uh, my candidate, uh, my client, and just went, you're gonna do what? Knocked him out of the role player mode. Fantastic, that's what we're looking for. So be bold, folks. Keep the structure going. Be absolutely um, driven in how you're going to deliver it. There's no room for maneuver. There's no room for real creativity here. Deliver the cuts of framework and you'll absolutely smash the role plays and score really highly. And remember, get those role players role played. I'd love to hear about the results. I'd love to hear more because I'm so, I was so tickled when I heard about the, you're gonna do what moment? And uh, the sort of shaking head, I've just accepted nothing off this person. They've got me. I'm loving it, I'm loving these stories. College of Policing, come on, this is a wake up call for you folks. You've really got to do something a little bit different. 2016, you evaluated your own assessment centre as being unfit for purpose. It's now 2018 and you're still doing the same thing. So College of Policing, you've got a little bit of work to do here to start testing for values, assessing for values, 
and then developing people's competence once they're in the police. You've got it the wrong way around now. Testing people's competence and then hoping for the best in terms of values is not the way forwards for a role where you need to be so emotionally aware of everything that's going on around you. Okay, if you have liked this video, then if you're watching this on Facebook, please do like it. If you've watched this on YouTube and you'd like to watch more of these videos, then please do subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything else you'd like me to um, vlog about in the future, either on Facebook or YouTube, then please do let me know in the comments below and I'll be absolutely delighted to hear your ideas. And I, I hope this has helped you, by the way. I really do, I sincerely do. Whether you pay for any of my courses or seminars uh, or not, uh, I really don't mind. I get abs I'm absolutely delighted with the emails I get on a daily basis from people who I've never met before, never heard of before, who have just told me how they watch my YouTube videos, watch my Facebook videos, um, followed me on my secret Facebook group, and they've managed to pass based on that. And that's absolutely fantastic, so I'm really pleased for them. So until next time, ne next time um, I think the next video I might be making could be from, let's see, where is it going to be? Exeter. No, Crawley. Crawley in Sussex. So I'll make another one there and we can compare notes on what the rooms look like. Okay, speak to you very soon. Bye-bye now.